right, roll call vote. Commissioner Khrushchev? Here. Commissioner Mendoza? Here. Commissioner Walker? Here. Vice Chair Dixon? Here. Chair Pahana? Let the record reflect that Chair Pahana has an excused absence. All right, announcements. These proceedings may be viewed on demand on the City of 29 Palms website at www.29palms.org. You may also live stream this meeting by going on the 29 Palms website or city website and clicking the meetings agenda link. Public comments. This is a time for the public to address the Planning Commission on issues within the jurisdiction of the commission that are not on the printed agenda. All comments are to be directed to the chair of the commission and shall not consist of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain a professional courtesy decorum during these comments or their comments. There is a time limitation of three minutes per person. If you haven't already done so, please fill out name, address slips, and give them to the Planning Commission Secretary. The Planning Commission is prohibited by the Brown Act state law from taking action or discussing at length items not included on the printed agenda. Public comments or specific agenda items will be deferred until consideration on the ad items on the agenda. Uh, next thing, commission comments and reports of meetings attended. Max? Oh, so yeah, of course, sorry. I didn't see any, have any flyers. So do I have anyone that wants to do public comments? Okay, thank you. Sorry. All right, we'll do uh, commission comments and reports of meetings attended. Max? Uh, I haven't uh, attended any meetings or anything since our last meeting. All right, great. Jim? I also have not attended any meetings since our last meeting. All right, and Greg? I have not attended any. All right, and I have not as well. Consent calendar, there are none. Items removed from the consent calendar for discussion. Uh, we'll move into public hearing. So I will turn this over to our community director, Mr. Travis. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. <coughs> this case is CUP 22000001, Snakes and Stars. You probably noticed that we have a new naming convention for our cases. This is a reflection of the management system that we've switched to. So instead of everything being called PC, whatever, um, each is divided into its specific topic, whether it's a CUP or site plan review or whatever. So that's how the numbering will go, be going forward. Uh, so this is a request uh, for a conditional use permit for establishment of a bar at existing commercial location and for finding of public convenience or necessity. Uh, the applicant is Eileen Leslie. Uh, the property uh, owner is 73529 on the highway incorporated. Uh, our development code does require that any sort of alcohol sale come before you as a conditional use permit. Uh, the zoning of the property is uh, general commercial CG and under the downtown, uh, the new downtown specific plan, it will be downtown traditional as well all the area around it. Uh, this is an aerial uh, image. Uh, sorry, I had to pull this from Google. My GIS went down. <laughs> Haven't been able to bring it back up, but uh, you can see the property is here, uh, kind of outlined in red, um, <coughs> right in the middle of downtown on the highway. Uh, to the uh, east is Papa John's, and to the west is uh, what was the old Bistro 29. Uh, this is uh, Freedom Way, uh, renamed uh, from Yucca Avenue, and this is Tamarisk Avenue here. Uh, this is the zoning map. As you see, the property is zoned uh, commercial general with some uh, public zoning adjacent. Again, in the new downtown plan, all of this becomes downtown traditional. So this uh, proposal includes the addition of approximately 500 square feet of outdoor seating in the front of the building along Route 62 and about 1,800 square feet of outdoor seating in the rear of the building, which would be along the Paseo. Uh, the applicant has applied for a Type 48 on sale general license from ABC that authorizes the sale of beer, wine, and spirits uh, for consumption on the premises, but also uh, consumption off-premises uh, were sold. Uh, these are some photos of the building. Uh, this is the front along uh, Route 62. And this is the rear of the building. Uh, you can see they have a rather large, uh, call it a backyard, uh, um, adjacent uh, to the structure. Uh, 
Uh, to the right is the Papa John's building and to the left is the old bistro building. Uh, this is a site plan, a proposed site plan for the project. Uh, this is the um, smaller, you know, outdoor seating that they would have along the uh, uh, front of the building. Uh, ADA access going up through the side. Uh, the bar would actually be in the structure, uh, that's the existing structure that is there uh, with an outdoor service area adjacent to it. And the bulk of it is going to be uh, seating. Uh, this is some early renditions of the uh, project. I believe the applicant is still working on refining these. Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, we'll be you know, submitting uh, these to building and safety when the time comes. Uh, but kind of in keeping with uh, the goal of you know, creating a lively uh, downtown, uh, especially uh, along the, uh, the public walkways there, and the especially the Paseo in the back. Uh, applicant asked me to include these photos. This is a previous business uh, that she owned in LA and just wanted to show the uh, before and after for the improvements that she made for that business. So uh, the operating hours are 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. That's more or less governed by state law uh, and ABC. Uh, in this request, the applicant is uh, uh, requesting uh, approval for outdoor live entertainment until midnight and pre-recorded outdoor music. This would be over speaker uh, in the bar area to 2 a.m. Uh, the development code prohibits ap uh, ampl amplification of sound between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., but it allows for the city to grant exceptions. So there is that potential there. Uh, this would be a precedent, obviously, uh, that we'd be setting. Uh, if the commission approves the extended hours for music, staff would recommend that the days be limited to the weekend days of Friday and Saturday nights and, you know, potentially holidays like, say, a New Year's Eve uh, type of celebration, and that it be on a trial basis. Uh, this project is exempt from environmental review. It's an existing facility. Uh, and... Uh, the recommendation uh, is to find the project exempt from CEQA and adopt the resolution approving the CUP and a finding of public convenience or necessity subject to the conditions of approval. So right now, the conditions of approval are written uh, that the outdoor live music would end at 10 p.m. Okay. And I believe the applicant is here uh, to make her presentation and answer any questions you would have. Okay, perfect. Does the applicant want to speak? All right, please come up to the podium and s state your name for me. My name is Eileen Leslie, and I am the sole owner of 73529 on the highway, which actually owns the Citus property. In addition to that, I think it's important to note that I bought Bistro 29. Mm -hmm. So on one of the pictures, uh, I think I want to talk about both how they relate. Actually, I want to step back further. When I watch these commission meetings, I see people come and present where they have, they're doing their green space, they're doing their roofing, and their, everything is, I'm a single person. I, I'm not coming in as an investor. I don't have partners. I'm not an LLC. The reason I set my properties up with inks is just protection from liability. I'm overinsured. So I want to say that to start with. So it's a little bit different. I'm not coming in that group. Um, Going back to the pictures, the reason why I wanted you to see the pictures from my building in Echo Park, that building, that's 2003, where the yellow shot is. And I bought that building because the seller was very kind and offered me seller financing. It's four blocks from Dodger Stadium. And I ultimately changed the three bottom commercial locations into starting with a cafe, going over to the second, it's three commercial uh, units on the bottom storefront. Second one extended to the beer and wine. Third one, uh, one the alcohol, second bar in addition to the cafe. I also had, as you can see in the final picture, I had sidewalk seating there. And ultimately I did win, as I did here, the ABC lottery for an inner county transfer. So I did that there, I've done that here. In that time that I had that license, I have no ABC reports of anything wrong. 
in addition to no police activity at all at that location. I ran music there five nights a week. I don't really intend to do that here. I have a little bit of a different intention. LA is obviously very different from here and the Dodger crowd is very different from up here. I came up here in 2016, um, was shocked to learn that that the only star that I thought was in sight in LA growing up my whole life and working very hard is a satellite. Had no idea that there were stars up here like this. And then I was warned about snakes. So hence the name, Snakes and Stars. That's the first thing you're warned about. It's the first beautiful thing you see when you're here. I named the restaurant The Sunset. It will probably have a very large mural on the side of the building that it will face in. In addition to that, um, on that one picture, it shows that there will be a, a, a window so we can have a little bit more grab and go. Because I really see this project as like kind of three concepts, which is difficult because there's a small kitchen there. So I thought we'd just kind of address that. I have the front sidewalk area um, on Snakes and Stars, but the rest, but, but because of typically how it runs in Joshua Tree with the visitor center moving, I really need, being open nine to five, I feel like we also need to have a window there. And I'm gonna start with that first. I think that that's where I should start with all of my intentions, accommodating the visitor center, having the live entertainment in back because it's needed, people need entertainment here. People are now, as a result of what just happened with the gas, I think we're gonna need it even more. People aren't gonna go to Palm Springs and Palm Desert. So I know that when um, the casino has its music nights, oh my God, it's packed up there. So I, I think that that's very necessary. The front uh, sidewalk, I really picture that as a spot that's a little bit more upscale. On the left where it says Papa John's with their huge red sign, I'll probably have a slatted block and there'll be lots of plants out there. There'll be lots of plants throughout this. Um, so the front, it's more, I'm probably gonna have charcuterie boards, very easy little pickings, things like that. And that goes back to the restaurant kitchen is small. And I, and I want to accommodate kind of three different concepts. So the charcuterie board's probably in front. I'll be playing like 60s kind of uh, French music, real sexy, real soft, real sweet for people that walk by. In the back going into the music, that's gonna definitely have music nine to five. But the reason why I'm asking for the 10 p.m., this city's growing. You're very flexible, it's the way ABC works. I wanna ask for it now so we don't go ask for it later. I think that 10 o'clock's early. People wanna come out at midnight. I'm the perfect person for you to start and try out with. We ran many, many outside concerts in Echo Park. We, I think eight years of where every single business was involved and that's what I ultimately hope to do where we're all involved with outside stages. People can be bussed around, things like that. Because there is a difference between LA. People start drinking, people in LA use Uber and Lyft. That's not the concept here. We all know that you know that's not as available. You can see in what they're doing on the Project Phoenix opening, they're having the buses. Brilliant idea. So. I'm not gonna be adding to that problem. I'm really cognizant of that. So I think that um, you know, pulling back the music a little bit, not being too crazy with drink specials, things like that. I'm gonna probably be a little bit more crazy with the food specials, uh, especially with the supply chain and the way our community is a little less affluent than LA. So I think it'd be great to have like $2 taco night, maybe on a Wednesday, maybe it's not a taco Tuesday, and then have drink specials as well. Um, other than that, I think that the picture in the right upper hand corner looks a little bit like Palm Springs, Palm Desert. That's not what I'm going for. I'm going for a very relaxed, I met a woman the other day and she's uh, an event planner. And she was like, what's your concept? What's your concept? And I was like, I'm not really like that. This is very simple. The concept is gonna be very driven by the vibe of what our community wants. It is, it is heavily influenced by music all kinds of music. Um, when I say all kinds, I say that to me, a lot of younger people, if, for example, in our restaurant one time we had CCR playing. I think everyone knows who CCR is. They were holding up their phone apps to figure out who the music was. Well, I think they should know. I think we ha have different types of music. Um, 
And so anyway, I think that that looks a little bit more conservative. It's going to probably be a little bit more bench seating, a little bit more booths, very comfortable where you can come in and relax. It's also going to be a safe space. Uh, that's a big thing for me, for women. There's a lot of single women that have moved up here during COVID. And they also need to have a space where they can go and they don't feel uncomfortable. That's a, that's a big thing to me. Um, other than that, I, I think that pretty much covers everything. I think that my only request about asking for those things specifically with regards to music and the music that I want to be running outside, especially the amplified music, amplified. I'm talking about Wi-Fi music on the outside in the nighttime, which according to them I don't think is amplified little confusion and maybe Travis and I'll flush out a little bit. If we say I can't have it and it's not the right definition, that's why I'm asking for that specifically. You need to have mu mood music, definitely in the front, the back. You know, uh, maybe I want to have an 80s night of where music's back there, things like that on the pre-recorded music, not the live music. So that's really a good place of just social gathering, fellowship, feeling safe, we need it. A lot of, uh, obviously tourists are gonna come here, a lot of military. I'll probably have a military open mic night. I think that'd be cool on an off night where they can get on stage and do what they wanna do. And that's pretty much it. It's just a casual place to have a really nice time where it's safe and it's, it's convenient. I think that's really what it is. All right, thank you. We'll go ahead and open up to staff. If you have any questions? For the applicant? Any other speakers here? Are we? Yeah. Oh, what's it go? To the public? No. Uh, that's, that's true. I didn't have my paper on me. <laughs> so I guess I'll open up to staff questions first. Travis, I'd like to clarify. Are we asking for amplified music until 10 a.m. or 10 p.m.? or until 12 p.m. every day? The applicant is asking for amplified music to 12 p.m. every day. And then for closing? Right. Until okay. to, to, to 12 p.m. to midnight. And our current code is, is 10 p.m. 12 a.m. It's 10 p.m. Thank you. Any questions for staff or anyone else? No, I just, uh, if, if, um, I'm looking at the conditions of approval and we don't, what you recommend inside the staff report is not contained in the conditions of approval. Right, the, the conditions of approval are our standard co uh, conditions. What I said in the staff report is if you're going to consider right. later hours to midnight, then I would limit those. Oh, and know, then we would modify the conditions. Right. Okay. So you would need to modify that condition, that's correct. That's all the questions I have for staff. All right. Max, you have any questions for staff? No, sir. All right, now open it up for hearing. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? No? All um, right. Oh, yes, we do. Well, I have a question or more comment. You know, it, it's these kind of venues downtown that are going to bring people downtown. I, I understand that. Also, what we're doing here, if we approve what you wanted, that's going to be setting a precedent mm -hmm. to where other places, and you may have, like, quieter music, but somebody could have a, you know, heavy metal cover band that's playing late down to a string quartet so I don't know what you know the approval doesn't say what type of music right it is so if you could go anyway I walked down to that area yeah you're you're blocked on both sides by both the bistro and uh, Papa John's and then you're just blasting out to an open field area where the hotel hopefully is going to be right right yeah uh, knowing that sound carries <coughs> in the desert and it carries for a while. I don't know if it's going to affect not knowing the decibel level or anything. And I think that I, I, I kind of like the compromise that you've set up in the recommendation to where we sit there and say, okay, let's see how it goes. Weekends, holidays, live music. Is that what we're si – that's your that's recommendation. That's, this is going to be your decision. Yeah, I understand that. If you go down that road, that would be right, my okay. recommendation. And those are my only concerns, is once we do this, we're going to open it up. It's going to be a precedent that's been set. Every other place on the block is going to want to have live music, and then you, I don't you know, know if the same conditions exist. There's, there's can, I, can I respond to you? Yeah, go ahead. I, I agree with you. I'm perfectly fine with the Friday, Saturday holidays. Yeah. I agree with you in the sense that here's the thing, and 
I don't think we should be opening it up to everyone. And Travis and I had this conversation. I actually got off the phone thinking, wow, I sounded so snobby. But <laughs> I wasn't. I was trying to make the point, I'm an owner. I'm not a renter. I'm an operator and I'm mm. an owner. I don't pay $400 deposit. I don't have an $800 a month rent. I mean, this is a significant investment. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that you have over me, if I don't comply, which I always comply, <laughs> look, that's, that, that's just the name of the game for me. You're never gonna write anything up bad about me. You're gonna be pleased with me. I think that that's the control that you have. You don't have to yeah. give it to anybody who asks for it. Yeah. I want other people to have it, but I think that you can condition them to a greater level if they come in for a special permit request mm -hmm. yeah. rather than someone like me. Oh, I understand. Right? That has, first of all, and I have a history. I have a history with ABC and LAPD. I don't violate because that's a lot of money on the line for violations. It's a lot of reputation on the line being in a small town. Listen, I was a small fish in a really big pond in LA. You could really do anything. And I didn't violate there. So I definitely wouldn't be violating here. The other, okay, so you have Bistro 29 too. Um, right, and which this is I'm calling the Sunset. Is there a, some synergy between the two restaurants? I, I think that it's hard to do that right now because okay. of what's going on economically. All right. Um, to be honest with you, I, I actually was in Nestro earlier with the Sunset first, and the sellers were really kind to me because it was like, wow, this is crazy with COVID. So it made getting the side, the back patio really important to me because right. I would basically be COVID proof on the restaurant. So then uh, that that was a miracle and that happened. It was very okay. simple that I got that this property. The synergy will ultimately feed all of it from the restaurant, but we have to start out slow because what happened today on food costs, I mean, I don't even know. Yeah. You know and then let's go to the food a little bit. So one thing that, that I've been a vegetarian for decades and vegan occasionally okay <laughs> so the restaurant itself will be a split kitchen so I'll also be providing that service where I do offer plant-based so I'm gonna mirror my menu and the sad thing about it well the weird thing about it is while I'm excited like you guys bang the gavel and like the hill might come in and I was like oh my god my property value just went up this is great the problem with that is with a small kitchen my menu shrank because I care about customer service mm -hmm. so while I tell you it's three concepts at the same time, you know, that's really concerning to me when you add also the economics of, you know, supply and demand, cost and everything like that. So my menu's getting smaller, my customer service stays high. And, it, and like I said, it's basically those three concepts, how I can divide that kitchen. And then I didn't tell you this, and I think it's important. Uh, this is Jason and what Will, Jason's been with me. He actually, I met him when I built the restaurant in LA and we've been together ever since and he worked front of house, I worked back of house. So I'm not gonna be um, sending off general manager or responsibility to someone else initially. I'm literally an operator. I will probably be in the kitchen initially. We think that's how it's gonna work here as well. Okay. So. So Stars and Snakes is gonna open first and then? Yes, Snakes and Stars first. And add the kitchen window from the restaurant. And to the, service what, the what was Bistro Twenty Nine? Are you going to keep the same? Is that going to open soon? That's the sunset. I'm going to probably start with the brunch. I'm thinking that's okay. after summer. And then you know, I know a lot of people want me to do a really high end restaurant inside of. I mean, we need it. It's nice. It'd be it's perfect location. Mm -hmm. Not a really I think we let the economics of it all settle down and see what the cost is. I mean, I'm not going to charge sixty dollars for steak you know, and have one person come in. I don't operate that way. Yeah. You know, I'd rather service more people to have a good time. So I think we have to hold back on like the everyday okay. operation in the nighttime of the restaurant. Okay. You okay. know, and Thank I don't you. want to say that. That was the whole thing while I was in escrow. Like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Okay. I closed escrow and now look where we are. I'm in a worse position on making these, these decisions. And then you guys are approving restaurants. Did I ask, talk about this? My, my I comment on this all the time to you. Oh my God, you just approved the Hilton. They don't have a restaurant. You need to get another restaurant. <laughs> you just approved 95 units with like these high-end storage units. Mm -hmm. Who's coming in? We need another restaurant. So mm -hmm. my restaurant shrinks mm -hmm. all the time. My restaurant menu.
because again, I'm always going to be about customer service and quality of the time that you're there. And 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 let me just say the reason that that's so important: people coming from other locations, San Francisco, San Diego, L.A., out of the country, they like to sit. They like to sit for two hours, have a really good time in a nice restaurant. So that's a big concern. Like, how do we really handle? Are we doing? you know medium high end fine dining i don't know i don't th i don't know today i would say no in 6 months i think i might be in a better position to say okay we're kind of getting there where we can talk about that all right thank you all right do i have any comments from the public i don't have any slips you do all right if i can have you come up here and then to the podium give your name and then at the end if you could fill out one of those comment slips uh, how is everybody <laughs> good I'm Stephen Buchanan I work for 29 Palms Realty and that sounds cool to me whatever she's saying that sounds good that's it alright thank you <laughs> do I have anyone else yes sir if you can bring that slip up to me I would greatly appreciate it or up to our secretary and then <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> and if you go to the podium, state your name, yeah. and then you'll have th three. three minutes. I, I, it won't take that long. Um, I'm impressed with her and, and her earnesty. The concern among my friends and I is that this is not only at this time um, a business district, it's also a residential district. And I haven't heard that addressed people are going to hear this all night long or, or not all night long that's not fair so i'm concerned about the fact that i don't know i don't know if you plan to keep those people in residence downtown that may be something i'm not privileged to but they live here now i don't but they do so and it seems on paper to be pretty large as an as a, as a beginning of of a project um, and things that grow organically and know when to stay small. Campbell Hill Bakery, huge success, it's very small. Um, sometimes these can, things that grow organically can do, uh, have a little less uh, opposition in the community. That's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll bring it up here for commission comments. Max, do you have anything? I like it. I'm all right with it. Yes, I'm all right with the staff's recommendations on the hours for the, for the music. As a, on, a, on a trial basis, if we get if we get some reports, we can adjust. But on a trial basis, I'm I'm good with the staff's recommendation for the hours. All right, Jim. Also, I'm a, I, I agree with the what staff recommendation on. Let's try it out. Let's put the hours. Uh, as indicated on uh, weekend weekends Friday Saturday and holidays and um, see how it goes okay thank and you if we, we, get, we may get complaints from the local residents I have had nobody come up here I know how sound travels I just don't know enough to all right Greg uh, <coughs> excuse me as the overall concept of the business and the layout of the dining areas if you will I like it. I like it a lot. I have a big issue with sound. First of all, that's in a box can. Yeah, it's going to echo back. Yep, and it's going to echo back and bounce back and forth off the wall. Sound does travel out here quite often. I live a mile and a half from the junior high school, and we can hear when they're announcing football games. So it does travel. I also have a concern about setting precedent. We have had other applicants in here. For example, Rasterita is doing a similar type venue, and their menu, their music must be shut off at 10 o'clock. And they are in a lot less of a residential area. I'm one of the closest people, and I'm a half mile from them. So, but I'm willing to experiment with the 12 a.m., 12 p.m., whatever you want to call it, the midnight limitation on Friday, Saturday, and holidays. 
uh, on a trial basis. Uh, yes, I like I like the business idea. I think it's a great fit with that area. Uh, I just have the concerns with the the music. All right, yeah, I definitely like the concept as well. Uh, the noise obviously is a concern as well because I mean I've heard football games and announcements and stuff like that, and sound does travel out here. So I do think I agree that you know if we set that precedence, then obviously those things that could be a concern to us. But if we try it on a trial basis, that should give us a basis on seeing how things go from there. So, but yeah, I think it's definitely something that will do good out here as well. So, all right, I will close it and then I will open it up for a uh, recommendation or a motion um, so to get this right so I, I <coughs> have it, so <coughs> make a motion that we approve the CUP with the recommendations from the staff on the limitation of hours um, as extension of hours. or well extension of our well limitation it's not seven days a week <coughs> The Friday or Saturday, Sunday, <coughs> excuse me, Friday, Saturday, and holidays, and, and the hours that have been specified. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Let me see this. Let's get this right. So the hours would be live music until midnight, midnight, Friday and Saturday, and then amplified music, whatever, until 2 p.m., which is closing on Friday, Saturdays, and holidays. Okay. Otherwise, everything else goes into effect 10 p.m on regular days. Is that correct? Is no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Amplified would be the live music you know, to midnight for Friday and Saturday. The, the other part that uh, Eileen was talking about is, I guess you kind of call it mood. We have mood live entertainment music. until midnight and outdoor pre-recorded music. Right. Until 2 a.m. Yeah. I'm trying to get this right. <laughs> so the pre-recorded would be until 2 a.m. Pre-recorded music, right, until 2 a.m. Closing. Yeah. Throughout every day they're open. The live yeah. music would be Friday and Saturday. And the live music no, would be no. okay. So pre-recorded music till 2 a.m. The, no. the, the, the pre-recorded no. music is not going to be, it's, it's going to be ambiance music, not I'm playing music because I want to hear a song and hear the words and I want to stand out there. It's going to be ambiance music. It's not going to be live yeah, music. Yeah, but there's nothing that. Live music, yes. You could cut that off at midnight, Friday and Saturday. The other, the other pre-recorded music is going to be ambiance music. Elevated music in the elevator. It'll just be loud enough so you can hear it and still have a conversation without having to raise your voice to have a conversation in the event, in the in the location. You want to <coughs> you want to put a decibel limit in there then? I suggest a decibel party, by the way, to be a little bit tempted in the middle there, because I don't we don't know, right? If it's at a party and we have music, then even if it's pre-recorded. If it comes through any type of electrical or electronic device, it's amplified. There are other locations in town that I guarantee have outdoor music, pre-recorded music that they play on speakers. Are they doing it with a permit? Do they do it past 10 o'clock? Yes, they do it past 10 o'clock. Do I know if they have a permit? I have no uh, earthly idea. Because we've got two terms here right now. We've got live music and then we have amplified music. So is amplified music and pre-recorded music or is amplified music? the code reads. <laughs> I'm looking at the recommendation. Right, I know, but, but I'm translating this to if there's a violation, how do we integrate it to the, to the code? So uh, the code reads, uh, operating playing uh, through radio, television, sound system, drum, musical instrument, or other similar device that reproduces sound. Uh, and then that's when the uh, hours are 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. could specify that you know past midnight or the that would be sort of the speaker system you know from the restaurant if you were so inclined so Not till 2 a.m. 
because even though it's recorded, at least you could put a decibel limit, that's fine. Because I can also produce live music that is not amplified that would be very quiet. Just simple guitar, an acoustic guitar. So does that count as live music? Or amplified music? It would under our code, yes. Under our code, right. If you have a person that's playing a guitar, very low voice, that's live music. Even though it's not amplified. Even though it's not mm -hmm. amplified, they can't do that out. They can't do that outside. Well, that co way our code reads. Yeah. Uh, no, to, 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 to The limitation currently is 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Or Monday through Sunday. Okay. Yeah, so, so every day. So they can still play in front, right? They can still do that in front of somebody. <coughs> and only that can be said. They can say only that can be said. Okay, and then that's on Saturday, right? Friday, Saturday, and Saturday. Okay. For live, but then she wants to continue so on. Amplified music, that's right. Every day. First of all, define ambiance music. <laughs> I can play classical music and, and blast your eardrums a half mile from my house. Okay? It's, I'm not trying to be persnickety, but we're talking about amplified music, period. Not what type of music it is, and unless we want to put a measurable decibel level at X distance, I can't see how we're going to enforce anything because we're allowing amplified music. Understand, but this is an outside set. If this is inside, like some of her gigs and things, it's a little different. Yeah. It's our, be a concern. So our, our, our code. Right yeah, if I could respond to Commissioner Mendoza. Our code already has the decibel limit in it. Does it? Yes. So, so there, there are decibel readings from uh, residential districts. <laughs> Uh, so that uh, interior and exterior uh, uh, decibels, uh, there is procedures for how you measure it, the type of noise, the location of noise relative to the complainant's property, time period for which noise is considered a complaint or nuisance, so that's the duration, uh, and data time of noise uh, survey. So our code already has that. That's, that's something that we can enforce today. Uh, for residential district exterior, it's called it's called C now. It's it's a combination of not just decibel, there are other factors, uh, but but roughly translates to 65 dBA. Uh, for which they'll probably be too loud, to be honest with that's, you. That's that's exterior. That's exterior, yeah. Okay. And uh, so same I, for. I would be fine setting decibel levels per the code of 65 until 2 a.m. for amplified music. Midnight for. Fridays and Saturdays and holidays for live music. Okay, so with that being said, do you want to redo your motion? Yeah, or are we still in discussion? <laughs> I'll, I'll make a, I make a motion. We approve the CUP with the conditions provided from staff setting the amplified music outdoors until 2 a.m. at a 65 dev decibel level and or less or less, <laughs> and right. allowing live music on Fridays and Saturdays and holidays until midnight. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. All right, roll call vote. Commissioner Khrushchev? Aye. Commissioner Mendoza? Simply because it's 2 a.m., <laughs> I will vote no. Commissioner Walker? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Dixon. Aye. Uh, three, one, approved. Uh, 
I'm gonna get you inside the sunset because from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock, I'm doing a honky tonk inside the restaurant. <laughs> so I got you covered. I don't want you to hear any music outside. I'm making you come inside. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you so much very much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the support. And I would never let any of us down. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number two, adoption of downtown specific plan and mitigation negative declaration. So I'll pass this off to our community director. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, commission members. I, I really don't have much of a presentation. Uh, we've already had, what, 12? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, from the last meeting, uh, just the changes to the document that you have in front of you, really corrections and, and uh, from the last meeting, most importantly, spelling Mr. Dixon's name properly. Uh, other grammar corrections I found on my third pass of reviews. Uh, changed a couple photographs. We had one from the Rib Company. That's not really downtown, so we changed that one. Uh, Did they make the correction to the adult facility? Definitely made that correction, so. Uh, and then the, um, the only thing that was kind of really of substance is there was in the design standards, the requirement for residential parking to the rear side. Uh, some of those lots downtown are 60 feet wide. It's gonna be really impossible in some cases to get parking back there, especially de depending on where your septic system is. Uh, so I added the phrase where practical just so that we could make a common sense decision on those types of things. That's ideal to put it on the side or in, in the rear, but it's not always possible. And that's really it. Those are, those are kind of really the changes from the last one. Uh, we did get two comments. Uh, uh, one from uh, Marcel Vincent. Uh, she was asking that uh, the drive-throughs in the downtown traditional be permitted and not require a CUP. Um, I explained to her that if it's a new development that's gonna go through site plan and design approval anyway, which will have conditions of approval, uh, and it's not staff's recommendation to remove that, the downtown traditional is the area where we're trying to protect and enhance that downtown traditional feel and vibe, that pedestrian emphasis, and so uh, would recommend keeping it as the CUP. Uh, we did get a late comment from Agua Caliente uh, on the uh, mitigate, well, I don't know, they looked at the mitigation measures, but uh, the two that they're talking about, human remains and the other about cultural resources study, they're both in there. Um, the CUL 4-4 and CUL-2, those are mitigation measures that are currently in the uh, initial study mitigated negative declaration. And those were the only two comments that we received. All right, perfect. Let's see if I can get this right. Do I have any staff questions? All right. Trying to think of my question. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make a because I tried to understand Maggie's uh, write up. Okay, so now so she wanted that change to P. We're going to keep it as a CUP. That's correct. And not just automatically permit it. Okay. I'm okay. Thank you. All right. Perfect. I'll open it up for the public. Do I have any public comments? I have no comment forms. All right. I'll close the public hearing. I'll bring it back up here for discussion. I'm ready to make a motion. All right, I have a motion. I re recommend or I make a motion that we approve the downtown specific plan with the changes that we suggested and forward it to the uh, city council for final approval. And the mitigated negative deck. Yeah, and the mitigated deck deck. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I a second. All right, I uh, have a roll call vote. Commissioner Khrushchev? Aye. Commissioner Mendoza? Aye. Commissioner Walker? Aye. Vice Chair Dixon? Aye. 4 0 approved. All right, perfect. All right, items to be referred to City Council. I don't think we have any, right? Besides that, that's going up there next. Discussion for potential action items. Okay. Uh, let's see, Community Development Director updates. I do have a few. All right. As always. Um, 
So uh, commissioners, we are putting the final final touches on uh, Project Phoenix. I, I would say we're 99.9% .9 there. <laughs> uh, all that last 1% though sometimes takes a while to do, but we're uh, on the buildings, the, really the last thing is uh, installing handrails uh, on all the um, you know stair stairwells and all that. So that's actually wrapping up today and tomorrow and then pouring just a little bit more concrete on Thursday uh, on the site side uh, and we're, we're, we're pretty much done. Um, so just a reminder to you all, our grand opening is Saturday the 12th starting with the farmer's market at 8, uh, the dedication ceremony at 10 and then the music co concerts at 1. Uh, other projects going on, uh, today actually we are paving uh, the bike trail on Amboy Road runs from Utah Trail to Sunmore uh, Park, Sunmore State Parkway, Sunmore Parkway. Yep, that's it. Um, so this is part of our active transportation plan that you guys all reviewed and approved some time ago. Uh, and it's been a, a, a project on our list for some time. We applied from some grant funds, weren't quite successful in those. So we are using some of the ARFA, ARFA funds to uh, construct those. That will be a class two trail. Uh, but it provides that critical linkage uh, down Amboy Road and up uh, Adobe Road uh, to the base. And then given the work the city did uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, south all the way to Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, so that, that work will wrap up in a week. Uh, the other th uh, project uh, with respect to trails we have going on, we have our permit from flood control for phase one of the channel trail. Uh, wrapping up uh, construction documents and specification documents so we can bid that out. Probably construction would be starting in early summer on that project. Uh, so that's uh, two trail projects. In addition, we will have the sum swimming pool rehab project that will also be uh, under construction in the summer. Uh, and there are two uh, safety projects regarding traffic uh, that we're, are underway. One is the neighborhood safety project that's really a lot of sort of, um, you know, enhancing, uh, you know, the stop signs and uh, uh, markings on the road, that sort of thing throughout the whole city. That project, the engineering for that is getting close to being finalized. Uh, so that will be bid out <laughs> soon as well. And then the other uh, safety project we have is the unsignalized intersection. You know, speaking of Utah, Utah and Amboy, that is an unsignalized intersection there. Uh, but there are some things that can be done to improve the safety, such as the warning devices, the beacons and things like that uh, to uh, alert drivers that there's an intersection ahead. So that engineering is also getting close to being complete. So we're gonna see a lot of infrastructure projects uh, over the summer. Uh, the other thing I wanna mention is the Building Improvement Loan Program uh, that was established uh, you know, as part of Project Phoenix. Uh, so far, we've had four projects approved, uh, and uh, three of which are underway. You can see some of the construction downtown as you walk through, and one was just submitted, uh, and that will be reviewed. And I know we have at least two, possibly three more in the wings. So, so far, we're off to a really good start of that uh, program, and uh, you know, from Mrs. Leslie's uh, project, you can see kind of the quality that we're getting. It's, it's really good quality renovations and uh, improvements to the facades of the structures downtown. Yes, yes. And then finally, I'll just mention uh, as far as the VHR changes to the ordinance, I have finished my edits and I'm sending it to the city attorney. So they'll review, hopefully they will do it quickly. <laughs> and my goal is to bring it back to you at our meeting on April 5th. And that's My note says it was. Right. 
I thought we made it yeah. that anyone can get by as many as they want. But the data that we provided, as you recall, did, didn't really support that that was happening. That we, no. we only had, what was it, two corporations, three corporations, yeah. and most were single owners. We were the only ones that had four. I think two split. Two, two had, had four. four and That's it. How? What's uh, going on with Dollar General and Grocery Outlet? Have you heard so anything more gro about Grocery Outlet? Their plans are approved. Um, we're just ready for them to come in and pay the fee okay. <laughs> and to pull the building permit. Uh, one contingency there, of course, is the Caltrans project, which is a median along Route 62. Uh, we're almost, I think, pretty much at 100% on engineering uh, with Caltrans on that. Uh, they did send back some comments on the encroachment permit that uh, uh, the grocery store was, a uh, grocery outlet was, uh, was had applied for, and so they're making some adjustments there. But as far as really the ap approval process from the city, we're done. It's really kind of coming down to Caltrans. Okay. Uh, Dollar General, we hadn't heard from uh, in a while, but they recently uh, popped back up and said they will be submitting. There were, uh, again, a round of corrections uh, that they had to make. Uh, we discovered an underground Edison vault on the property that needs to be accommodated, so they had to make some changes there. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, I think that's it for us, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, join the meeting. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>